What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for yet another player ratings. Tottenham beat Brighton 2-1 last night, 7.15 kickoff at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I mean, it wasn't the greatest performance, let's be honest, but a win's a win, three points on the board and up second in the table. Yeah, you just got to take every win as it comes at the moment. There's no easy game at the moment in the Premier League, as Mourinho said after the game, so it was a crucial three points. And yeah, the table is looking good at the moment. It is, it is. I mean, there's not a lot of points in it from like top till no. like mid table, but that's what happens early on in the season. You can just win the games that come your way, and that's what we're doing at the moment. Hard fought victories now against Burnley and against Brighton. Let's get into the player ratings. Let's start off with Hugo Lloris, who gave him a six. Um, apart from an early a save early on, I can't really, really remember too much he had to do. Uh, Lamptey with a really nice finish mm. to get past Lloris. Uh, do you think he could have done anything with that? No, uh, it was a really good finish. Uh, I, I, I don't think he could have got to that. I um, was too far um, away from his far side. And Lloris had a quiet day at the office again, despite Brighton's domination. They didn't really test him that much. We seem to be saying the same thing about Hugo Lloris week in, week out. You know, not a lot quiet to do. day, not a lot to do. Big Six out of ten. Big change from last season yeah, where exactly. he was making a lot of saves. So, uh, uh, week after week, he was keeping us in games. And it's interesting this season, even when we're not playing well, like against Burnley and like against uh, Brighton, we're, still, we're not conceding that many chances, which is uh, positive. Exactly. We're which uh, the big reasons for that we'll get on to. But let's move on to Matt Doherty. We gave him a seven. In my opinion, I think it was his best performance in a Spurs shirt last night. It's not the kind of marauding right-back performance that we're used to seeing from his time at Wolves. Uh, I don't think he got forward that many times yesterday. Mm. But what I want to say, his defensive work, especially in the last 10, 15 minutes, was absolutely crucial to the team. The amount of ball recoveries, as you can see on your screen right now, um, it's just insane. And Jules as well. The amount of Jules that he won was just um, great to see from Matt Doherty. And I think his performances are growing. Yeah, defensively, it was a really strong performance. Unfortunately, we didn't see too much from going the other way. We didn't see him like, link up with Lamella too many times um, in the final third. Was it, there was a few nice link up with Bell when he came on. Yeah, yeah he seems to see a few times when he's played with Bell. He's linked up uh, um, nicely with him. They seem to have a good relationship. But um, you can see defensively that... Um, he's, he was quite decent yesterday and I think um, at the moment he doesn't quite have um, what it takes no, he doesn't quite have it in his game to be up and down that right flank the whole game but at least when he's back there defending he's strong and he's solid and he's not getting beaten and uh, it was a solid defensive di display from him yesterday yeah let's move on to Serge Rechelon we gave him a 7 uh, lovely lovely assist for the goal mm -hmm. uh, to pinpoint uh, Gareth Bale out but look, I think it was a carbon copy of the assist against Chelsea, really. Really was, um, yeah. But in terms of his all-round game display, I thought he got up and down well. Um, there's nothing really negative to note from his performance yesterday, I don't think. Uh, the only negative is the goal came on his side, but True. it wasn't really his fault. It wasn't his fault because if you look at the, if you look at um, how the goal went in. Pascal Gross is the right winger at the time and he's marking him and uh, Son lets go Lamptey and uh, he Lamptey gets in behind. If there was better communication, maybe Son could have gotten on to Gross and he could have uh, dropped back into Tarek Lamptey and uh, they could have defended that better. Unfortunately, it ended up in the back of the net. We all know it should be ruled out anyway. But as you say, yeah, great uh, assist on his right foot. He shows he a couple of times now he can cut inside and he still um, has an accurate cross on him. And I think he forced a save out of the keeper as well in the first half. And he, he's always an outlet. How many times do you see Toby Odeveld pinging a ball into him mm -hmm. into space? So many time after time after time. He's always there. He's always available. And it's a big difference to Ben Davis, who just doesn't have that energy to get up and down the pitch like Rekulon does. It's such a difference. And it really um, asks questions of the defence when uh, you have a fullback like Rekulon in the team. And he, uh, week after week, he's improving. He really has fitted into the team like a glove. He's, uh, you can see not just in uh, the way he plays, it's just personality as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really good to see. 100%. Let's move on to Eric Dyer. We gave him an eight. I mean, it's so good to have him back in the side. Um, he really puts in commanding performances. I thought his aerial ability of, uh, you know, crosses coming in or over the top balls from Brighton. I think he matched every single one that came. Uh, just a commanding performance from him. Yeah. Um, luckily, they didn't have a striker on the pitch. So despite Brighton having a lot of uh, possession and putting us under a lot of pressure, they really did lack a, a big cutting edge to their play. And whenever they got into the final third, they didn't have that striker. So he had a, maybe an easier ride than he would have done if Morpai was playing. But having said that, he dealt with Trossard very, very well. Trossard barely had a kickle game. Um, he didn't 
couldn't get a sniff and Dyer was uh, making a lot of clearances a lot of headers out and him and Toby are starting to form a nice little partnership they are as well you know someone on Twitter was saying that these two were the last resort and they'll never play together yeah. uh, they seem like our best partnership at the moment yeah that was uh, the football footy insider showing out what they know because <laughs> ever since, literally ever since they tweeted that saying they got some info that Dyer and Toby are going to be last resort they've started like every game and they've been playing well yeah I mean everyone knows that Dyer is one of Jose's favourites but let's move on to Toby Alvaro number eight who doesn't seem to be one of Jose's favourites let's be honest but look well you say that he signed a contract as soon as Jose signed didn't yeah he? and I'm, I'm talking about in terms of starting week in week out he hasn't really been one of Jose's uh, chosen ones to yeah. start week in well, week he, out it's weird I mean? he was up until lockdown and then our lockdown came in and all of a sudden he was in and out of the team he mm. came he was out started out came in a few games and played well start of the season he was out again yeah and then came in and played was starting to play well again so yeah so what I was going to say is as soon as he's come back into the side last two games now I thought he's been absolutely sensational mm. um, his performance yesterday you know he was doing his Toby pings throughout the whole game pretty on much point, on point oh, absolutely on point and the one that was really on point was the one all the way to Rekulon who, um, who crossed in for the goal uh, but what I want to say about Toby as well he dealt with everything that came his way and I think that this guy is really fitting into this I mean I'm not saying he didn't fit into the team before but now um, it's going to be hard to take him out the side yeah he's playing at a really high level at the moment Toby he's getting back to where he was when um, uh, after lockdown where he put putting some really strong performances at the beginning of this season uh, especially against Everton he was looking like he was struggling a bit but he seems to be coming back into form now and maybe getting his fitness up a bit um, as you say his to the Toby Pings were completely on point yesterday it was really lo lovely to see he's like, he, when he's in this kind of form he's, he's a joy to watch Toby Aldevero he really is and hopefully he can carry it on and I think yeah him and Dyer are really starting to make a nice little partnership with centre back and it's very interesting that for, I believe for the second match in a row Premier League match Sanchez has been left out of the squad mm. so I don't know whether that's a sign of things to come but he has to be making some mistakes so and I, I, it's interesting that Roden he's put Roden ahead of him on the bench I don't know whether it's because Roden can't play Europa League or whatnot. we have to remain to be seen do but you, do you, it is interesting do you fear to for know. Sanchez a bit? I don't know if I fear for, well to be honest we it's about time to be honest because he's True. been here a long time True. he's been here a long time and, he, and we're now he's now in his fourth year yeah. at Spurs and yeah. he keeps making the same mistakes which is a bit of a shame but I, I do believe he's a, he can be a very good quality defender Sanchez he just he has got he has got the qualities he just needs to get that concentration right yeah Let's move on to Pierre Emil Hoybier. We gave him an eight. Me personally, um, it was a toss up between him and Toby Advard for our man the match yesterday. Mm. Um, in terms of Hoybier's performance, it wasn't it wasn't the perfect Pierre performance. Let's be honest. There were a couple of misplaced passes in there, but all in all, the work that he did for the team was absolutely sensational. Like I keep saying time and time again, he's getting more and more increasingly important for the team, and I can't see us playing without him at the moment. I really yeah. can't. How many? If you watch the watch along that we did, how many times did they say, oh, ball recovered from Hoybier, Hoybier's in there again, or Hoybier mm -hmm. winning the ball back yet again? Literally, I kept saying that throughout the whole game, because every time Brian get the ball, it's like he's he's just there, like a rash on them. Uh, he's such a, he's been an absolutely phenomenal addition to the team, and you say he done a lot of misplaced passes but he actually had the highest pass completion rate in yeah. the team at 89 percent um so i just remember two or three misplaced passes it wasn't like anything over the top yeah no I'm just, I'm just saying he had the, actually i'm saying his passing was the, was the best in the team yeah um so but and, and eight eight recoveries eight recoveries as well which i which i believe is the highest in the team and also uh, i believe he had the highest amount of uh, passes into the final third as well so he's also not only contributing off the ball but on the ball as well and it's interesting because hoybier himself um, he said he sees himself uh, before he signed for Spurs anyway he sees himself more as number 8 and the fact he said um, his strengths are actually on the ball and and his strengths off the ball came later in his career so that's where he originally saw himself so I think we, if you know the way he's playing at the moment the way he's developing he could turn into really the best DM in the league at the moment I mean at the moment he is so vital to us it's unbelievable I think I genuinely believe if he was not playing yesterday, we lose that game. Mm, completely agree, and we don't know, and that's exactly what we'd be missing. Like for example, in this kind of game last season, where Brighton would have had possession, it would have been so much easier for them to be getting shots off and creating yeah. chances because we didn't have someone like Hoybier in there last season. Now we have a screen for the back four. It's a lot harder for teams to get to to our box. How easy was it last season for teams to bypass our midfield and get into get anywhere near the box how, and get shots off? How many times? Now it's difficult. How many times? 
times yesterday did Brighton have the ball in like dangerous areas for us? Not many, yeah. not many at all. With the amount, with the everyone that's saying how well Brighton played, and they did play very well, but it's all credit to Pierre, Hoybier, Doherty, Rechelon, Dyer, and Toby for them not and having, Sissoko. and Sissoko, uh, for, for them not having um, the ball in any dangerous positions pretty much throughout the whole game. And it's also good to note, obvious foul on him for the goal. Yeah, obvious mean, foul. Obvious. Can't believe they didn't give it. Absolute shambles. We've gone into that enough, but what an awful, awful decision uh, to not give the foul against Hoybier. Yeah. Let's move on to Musa Soko. We gave him a seven. Um, a pretty much an unsung hero, I believe. Uh, last couple of weeks as well, not just this game, but he does a lot of work that goes unnoticed. Um, his absolute his work rate is absolutely second to none, which we know from Musa Soko covers every blade of grass. I think I use that term in every single Musa Soko player rating yeah. because he does. He, he does, and and the work he does for the team is absolutely second to none. Um, and yeah, I just like to see the same week in week out from Musa Soko, please. Yeah, with all with uh, the formation that Brian played with the wing backs. Sully March and Lamptey and then you've got the two inside forwards in Nalana and Pascal Gross you're going to need your midfielders to really dig deep and um, be putting out a lot of fires Yeah, you get, they, they, need, they need to be um, exerting a lot of energy using their strengths and Sissoko definitely complimented Hoybier and obviously Hoybier was the main man and Hoybier was a lot better on the ball as well but I think Sissoko also gets a lot of credit for the amount of times he was winning the ball back and um, and also he added to that stability defensively for us but it was interesting to see um, Mourinho's comments after the game I guess, I guess we'll get into that later about uh, Dembele and Lo Celso playing together um, but what that means for Sissoko we'll see yeah I mean as well eight ball recoveries from Musa Sissoko as well which is absolutely great from him uh, let's move on to Tongi Undombele. We gave him a six. I thought he was pretty much stifled from that early yellow card that he yeah. got. Um, it, you could see in his play that he was kind of like wary of that yellow card and he didn't want to get too stuck in because he knew he could have. He was just one tackle away from being sent off pretty much. But on the ball, I thought he was he was pretty good. Um, just not the kind of Tongi Undombele that we're used to seeing over the last couple of weeks because of that yellow card, I believe. And I believe yeah. that he should have been taken off half time for Lo Celso. You could see it. It wasn't just it, it wasn't just his play uh, on the ball, but like how many times uh, he he let a Brighton player just breeze past him because he didn't want to make a challenge because he knew that any any slight miscalculation it could be a second yellow and it definitely 100% impacted his game I actually thought when he um, got the chances on the ball uh, the few um, times he did uh, he did. He was quite yeah. good again, and he showed his quality. But this kind of game, when Brian had a lot of possession, he definitely struggled in in that kind of game, and it definitely wasn't his forte. And he's a player who loves being on the ball. That's where he comes alive, where he's got possession. And when uh, Spurs are dominating the ball, that's when he's really, really, uh, um, where he really comes alive. But yesterday, uh, when when he was chasing the ball a lot, uh, trying to win tackles, win the ball back, it wasn't really his game, and um, it uh, he didn't, and he def definitely didn't benefit from having that yellow card. So it wasn't his best display, but he'll he'll, he'll have better games. Hundred percent. I mean, Tongi and Dombele, the work that he's put in this season, he he's allowed uh, games like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. A one off. Um, let's move on to Hyun Min Son. We gave him a four. Uh, it was a difficult, difficult evening or night for Hume Min Son. He was kind of stifled from the Brighton defence. I think they were doubling up on him every time. Uh, Lamperty did a good job on him as well. Um, it was just a very difficult uh, day for Hume Min Son. Nothing was really coming from him and no really moments to talk about, to be honest. Yeah, um, it was a quiet day for him. Probably his worst performance of the season, you have to say. Uh, he was very quiet. The only thing I would say is, I think for the for the penalty, I believe it was a nice ball by Ndombele playing Son in behind, and um, it created a bit of havoc in the Brighton back four, which uh, got us uh, got us the penalty in the end. But other than that, uh, he was stifled. Um, Lamptey uh, dealt with him pretty well, uh, and and Webster as well on that right hand side, and it was it was hard for him to get in the game. But thankfully, uh, the way our squad is, we had other attacking players to step up when he yeah. wasn't. Uh, which moves us on to Eric Lamella. We gave him a six. I felt that everything we've just said about Son, they concentrated so much on Son. I felt that they kind of left Lamella kind of unmarked a lot of the times, and uh, but he couldn't really capitalise on it too much. He was causing problems to the Brighton defence, probably more than Son and potentially more than Kane even throughout the game, but um, nothing really came of it. He had that pop shot from 35 yards or 30 post, yards. I yeah. hit the post, uh, but apart from that, not too much to note. 
Yeah, I think another display from Lamella where he's putting in a lot of energy. He's um, he's working extremely hard for the team. Uh, you know, Solly March didn't get, wasn't allowed a free run because Lamella's tracking him back every single time he goes forward. I thought he actually had a pretty decent game, and I think you you, have, you should give him a lot of credit. But unfortunately, again, going the other way, uh, can uh, flatter to deceive a bit and didn't con could could have contributed a bit more. And it's and but I thought again he gets a start, and I thought he did he did all right. But him, do you think he grabbed the chance? No, he didn't grab it. You know, he didn't say he didn't. Um, He's not making himself unpickable. Exactly, he didn't make tell Mourinho, look, you, you, you're picking me next game. That's it. But I still think he worked very hard for the team, and he, he didn't do himself any harm. I would say that it was a better performance from an Eric Lamella starting role because he usually makes his name coming off the bench. He's uh, a lot better off the bench, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's move on to Harry Kane. We gave him a seven, the last of the starting eleven. Um, won the penalty well. It was a penalty, let's be Definitely. honest. Um, so. It was definitely a penalty, definitely in the well, box. What, do you, what do you think of the pun? Some pundit saying that uh, you know he was Kane's looking for it. He's looking at uh, Lallana and backing backing into him and forcing the challenge. Because uh, some pundits are saying that Kane knows what he's doing and he and he should have and he's actually could cause an injury. I'm not sure about that. To say he knows what he's doing, yeah, I mean, we've seen Kane do stuff like this before, like backing in the defenders to win a foul. I mean, it's just part and parcel of the game right now. Is it now. clever play or is it dangerous play? I don't think it's dangerous play. Mm. I don't think it's dangerous play. I think it is clever play from Harry Kane. He wins the penalty. You see great strikers all over Europe doing similar things, and Harry Kane as well. He's one of the greatest strikers um, in Europe at the moment, and he's doing exactly the same things, you know, winning points for the team, uh, lovely penalty. It, was, it actually wasn't that much of a lovely penalty, but he put it in the goal uh, nonetheless. He um, forgot to send the wrong way. Yeah, but all in all, it wasn't the greatest display from Harry Kane, but gets us the goal and uh, we go on to win the game. Yeah, but it, it wasn't just the, the, the goal as well. First of all, he also hit the post, could have got a second and yeah, later on. Yeah, I mean, that was a bad touch, to yeah, be honest. He if, he, if he takes a better touch there, it's a goal. He'll be disappointed in that. Um, but I think that just again the job he does for the team is is so crucial. I mean, he's our best defender, yeah, best midfielder, always, best striker. He's, he's always tracking back. He's always working really, really hard. And and this is actually something that um, I think Harry Kane had lost an element of that um, in the latter days of Pochettino. He wasn't. I wouldn't say not trying as hard, but you know Pochettino always demands that high press from the front, always chasing down all lost causes and everything. And I don't think he kind of has that in his game anymore to be that intense. But what he can do is be dropping back a lot and helping out the defence uh, when needed. And that's exactly what he's been doing uh, under Jose. And he, the way he's developing is so exciting. And it's another goal for him. Six goals, eight assists. So he keeps clocking up with the goals and assists. And look, it wasn't a vintage Harry Kane performance, but he still ends up with a goal. And, and I think he comes out with a lot, a lot of credit. Definitely. Uh, let's move on to the substitutes. Giovanni Lo Celso uh, came on for Tonkyu and Dombele with around 20. 5 26 minutes to go um it was a it was a nice display from La Celso. i wouldn't say there was too much of note but there were some nice moments on the ball from him um as Mourinho said after the game he's not fully fit and we just need to get him back to full fitness um and there was a comment from Mourinho as well about him and Tongi and Dombele playing together what did you make out of those yeah so he said he was asked about La Celso and he's saying you know he's still getting back back to full fitness and uh you, uh, you saw against Antwerp you know he doesn't have that fitness yet to play central midfield but maybe as a 10 for the time being he can do it uh, but yeah he was asked can Tongi and Lo Celso play together he said yes which is what a lot of people have been uh, asking that question a lot of people want to see that um, he said they can play together they just both need to get to that their peak fitness so they can both play 90 minutes and have the energy required to kind of do both roles of attacking and shielding defence and that's what everyone's very excited about a potential Tongi and Lo Celso link up I thought it was a decent cameo yesterday I think he's showing that he's, start, he's getting there slowly in terms of fitness but um, he's not 100% there for sure but hopefully he'll start on Thursday Europa League build up his match fitness again and the sooner we get Tongi and Lo Celso together with Hoybier it just makes your mouth water that prospect potentially because we could really uh, start hurting teams properly There's, I mean we're hurting teams already but with them we could be it's going to be just an exciting thought I I'm, I'm I'm not saying it's a big worry but I'm slightly worried um, of Lo Celso's uh, fitness I really am because he seems very injury prone and it's very hard for him to get a good run of games going. So um, it worries me a tiny bit. I know he had that big run towards the back end of last season, but his in, his season last year was blighted with injuries and now it seems to be struggling again this season with injuries. 
I don't know. I don't know. Um, he came when he came to Tottenham. I think he was injured, didn't wasn't yeah. he? he? Came injured. Yeah. Then he got fit. And then got injured. He played a no. He played a really. He played a long stretch up from January or or, or from um, December up until lockdown, playing quite well. And then well, I, he was our best player in that period. Yeah, and then one once we came back from lockdown, um, he I think he picked up an injury, but he played through the injury. Yeah. And then and and now he's coming back from that. So I don't know if it's I don't know if I don't know. We'll see. I'm not worried about his fitness. I, I don't think he's like injury prone. He's just what's one of those things. I th- I, I hope I'm so. Not worried. I hope so. I mean, because I, I, I rate him so highly, Giovanni, and I just want to see him back playing to to the way we know he can play. No, I'm not worried yet about his fitness. I think he'll, he'll get there. All right, and last but not least, Gareth Bell. We gave him an eight. What he came moment. on for the last twenty minutes. I mean, what a moment. The ball comes over the top from Toby Alderweire. Rechelon with a lovely cross in from, his, from the right hand, from the left hand side with his right foot. And Gareth Bell is there completely unmarked in the box. But to be honest, he took it well because he still had quite a bit to do. It's with a that good header. header, really good header. The way he, cur- like he curls it in with his head into the corner as well wasn't as easy as he looks. And from a flat de- delivery from Rechelon. And, but uh, that's he bread really and butter well. for, for Bell. He loves those mo- those chances. He's really good in the air, really underrated. And he actually nearly set up, he nearly set up the Kane uh, chance just before that, where Kane hit the post. He well, he won another header there um, to the back post, showing his aerial prowess. And that's exactly what we need from Bell. Late in games where it's tight, he, uh, we need a bit of star quality to make the difference. And it's exactly uh, what happened yesterday. And I think he's really coming along now, Bell. I think we're starting to see uh, glimpses of him um, getting back to s- some sort of uh, full fitness and you know Mourinho said he's going to start on Thursday as well it's really exciting um, the prospect of having him uh, Kane and uh, Son on the on the uh, same team and it's actually interesting that you know when they have played together I know against West Ham uh, we gave away the three goals but he had a chance there um, when he when he came on and he and, he, and I think I, I, and obviously he scored a goal now when he's come on uh, against Brighton so it's two games since he's come on and he's, he's made things happen when he's come he, off the bench he gets, him play, his, he gets himself in the right places at the right time and that's what all good players do you know what I mean and what but, the, but defenders know they can't double up on Kane or Son when he's also on the pitch as well that's what I was about to say like you see Bale's in the box there completely free I was going to say do you think that's bad defending or do you just think they've got no choice because they've got Kane to worry about they've got Son to worry about and then Bale's just kind of roaming there uh, watching, the, watching the goal back it was bad defending it was because uh, they had more than they had like four four or five defenders in the box marking three players and Bell somehow f- found space so you've got to say that Brian should have d- defended that a lot better but having said that I think Son and Kane the way they're playing at the moment especially they do occupy players minds and they do they de- de- definitely it's under their own destruction you've got to double off on this player and that player and if you put Bell in the mix as well it's going to be so hard to stop any of them uh, all of them at the same time and you know you've got to see who you're going to concentrate on and at the moment what we've seen so far is when Bell, Son and Kane are on the pitch together uh, but a defence has struggled to deal with it mm-hmm. and um, so it's, it's an exciting prospect from they're all in full flow and what's also great is you know Son didn't have the best game and then Bell comes on and steps up and that's exactly what we need when when you know because not all, every player is not always going to be at their best all the time and you need certain players to step up at certain times and it was Bell's turn yesterday yeah uh, last but not least, Ben Davis. He came on for the last couple of minutes. Not going to give him rating, not too much of note. Um, he came in for Son just to shore up the defence last couple of minutes. Um, but let's talk about Jose Mourinho. Mm-hmm. How do you feel he kind of set the team up um, before the game? How were you feeling? And how do you think it worked out? Yeah, I think no, pro- no, no problem with the uh, lineup. I think lineup uh, w- w- uh, is what it is. I think he couldn't have made too many changes. Um, I think we started the game really well and I think again um, these fast starts we've done it many times now this season it's really impressive the, the, the energy we start with and a lot of the times getting early goals we've got a lot of early goals now against Newcastle against West Ham and against Brighton we're, we're getting we're getting early chances the only problem that I'm seeing is again that period uh, where we're, we're we're kind of giving control to Brighton from when we score to when we concede yeah we're giving control to Brighton we're making it easy for them to control the game uh, we're not making it easy to create chances so fair play I think defensively again Although we conceded from open play, I think we defended really well. Didn't concede a lot of chances. Didn't concede only many shots on target. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got to give Mourinho credit in terms of 
we the in terms of control of the match we conceded it but in terms of um f uh, feeling under pressure and feeling we're going to concede we didn't it wasn't it wasn't too strong but i just feel like like against burnley and i think to, against brian yesterday um, the biggest criticism people have had of, from Mourinho uh, in a, since his time as manager is that he's too concerned about the strengths of, of um, opposition teams and he caters too, he overcorrects too much um, to kind of uh, counterbalance uh, the, the strengths and he doesn't focus enough on our own game, which is exactly the opposite to Pochettino. Pochettino didn't worry at all about the, the strengths of the other team and focus completely on our strengths and how we're playing. Yeah. Mourinho's kind of the opposite. He can no, not the opposite, but he focuses a lot on the strengths of the, of the opposition team and doesn't focus enough on how we're going to play and how we're going to hurt them. And that frustrates me a little. I would like to see I would like to see us concentrate on how we're going to attack and how we're going to play and hurt the opposition more because I feel like um, it let, we let we let games drift or occasionally anyway. Last couple of games we've been letting games drift and just been concentrating on nullifying the opposition as opposed to exerting our, ourselves on the game. But having said that. Um, I do feel like uh, we've. I felt like in the game when we did want to attack, we could hurt them. And when we decided to attack again, we you know we, we, very quick succession. We hit the post twice. We uh, and, and we got the goal as well. So we showed when we want to attack, we can hurt them. I just feel like sometimes we overcorrect and uh, something. There's a balance that Mourinho needs to look at. But we're still learning. I think we're still a bit of a work in progress. We're not the finished article yet. So um, I think we're, we're it's positive. I think we we. You know, we had a higher XG than Brian, so you can see that we're still creating better quality chances and we're still kind of more in control. But the way we conceded control was a bit frustrating, that's all. What would you put it down to, the way that we, you know, we look good, we score a goal, and then we start kind of regressing and regressing and regressing and regressing down the pitch into our own kind of box? Do you put that down to mentality of the players or do you put that down to Jose Mourinho instruction? I think it's I think it's communication of the tactics I think so I think uh, and I think that um we have to there's still there's still puzzle pieces that we're looking to find in terms of how we're going to counter attack counter attack effectively when a team like Brighton is so dominant on the ball um, but I do think it's definitely a deliberate tactic because there's no coincidence that every game, Newcastle, West Ham, and now and now Brian, we're having really quick starts. We're getting early goals, creating loads of chances, and then we're dropping off a bit, and then we're allowing uh, the opposition. But it's not good to see. It to just have... invites the opposition back into the game. It does, but, uh, and but I, you know, I've seen it work a hundred times under Mourinho, where uh, you get the lead give opposition defence and hit on the counter and it works to perfection and we they create loads of chance on the counter. However, we just haven't made it work in the past few games and it's been a bit worrying the, la the just the lack of effectiveness we've had on the counter. When we've had counter attacks, we kind of get nullified quite easily and mm -hmm. it's quite easy for teams just to squeeze up on us and pressure press us and win the ball back effectively and we're restricted to long balls over the top and then they're easily cut out. Um, so that's a bit frustrating, but I think we're still getting the balance right and i don't think i don't think it's uh, these are the tactics we're going to see forever it's just i think we're just still trying to work out the balance but i don't think there's any coincidence that every time we're we're getting these leads or having really quick starts um putting a lot of energy in and then dropping back i think that's a deliberate tactic but i think he's got to look at how we can do that and still be very effective when we do have the ball because at the moment uh when we're on the counter we don't seem so effective yeah no I completely agree with that um, but anyway there you have it that is our player ratings for the Tottenham win over Brighton at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last night let me know in the comment section below what you think of our ratings and what you think your ratings are let me know in the comment section below like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on, on you Spurs, Spurs.